morning, good afternoon, everybody. We're just waiting for everybody to come into the webinar. We've got something really exciting for you today, as I'm sure you're all aware of um, Heritage Hotels in Kenya. I've got a big smile on my face anyway. I can see a lot of you coming in, so we won't be another, another couple of minutes. Okay. Well, thank you very much um, on behalf of my booking awards for coming on to our, our webinar today. Um, I would love to introduce you to Tabitha. Um, Tabitha. right at the very, very bottom. If you want to write to us all, just change it to all panellists and attendees. Um, and any questions and answers you've got, which I think you will have a few, um, if you can pop them into the Q&A tab um, so that we don't have to try and find all the different questions um, at the end of the presentation. Um, so without further ado, um, Tabitha, if I can leave everything over to you and if you can tell us all about your fantastic product, please. All right, thank you, Sarah. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone. Um, it's an honor, by the way, as on my behalf and the behalf of Heritage Hotels. It's been a long time coming. Uh, so I would be, I'm delighted to be here today and especially to explain to you our product and to also invite you to come home. They say Africa is a cleaner of mankind. So as a group of hotels, we are very unique, uh, situated in Kenya. Uh, we have a total of three brands. We have six properties in Kenya. Uh, of the three, uh, six properties, we have three brands, which is basically the Explorer, the Intrepid, and the Voyager brand. We also have a kids club, uh, the Young Rangers and Adventurers club, uh, based on two age, age groups. On the Kenyan map, uh, we have properties uh, in different parks. We have Samburu Intrapids up north. We have Great River Valley Lodge in Naivasha. That's um, about two hours drive out of the city of Nairobi. In Masai Mara, we have two properties. We have something in Savo National Park. That is Savo, Savo West National Park. And we have Voyager Beach Resort. The first property is Mar Mara Explorer. The property has 10 tents all river facing, we have outdoor baths. There is Wi-Fi in the public areas. Uh, some of the things you can do in this property include uh, cultural visits. There's game viewing all year round. You can go on balloon safaris. There's bush dinner. So basically this property is adult only. So kids are not allowed. We accept kids from the age of 16 and above. The property is also sold on all inclusive basis. So you have meals, you have drinks, laundry, Bush breakfast is also included. That's a view of the tent. It's, uh, you may hear your clients asking you for the property with outdoor baths. So our bathrooms in this particular property outside. Your experience in terms of your game drive, we use open vehicles. The jeeps are open. Again, another view of the tent. So the tent, these are largely tented camp but uh, we flip the tent depending on the area and you have lots of privacy between one tent and the next. So the game drive in this property is very good and obviously there's balloon safari. We also offer bush dinners and bush breakfasts and this is also something that uh, your clients will enjoy. It's interactive and being 10 tents, um, even if we have uh, uh, all guests in doubles, there's still 20 guests so it's easy to manage them. The next property is Mara Intrapids. The difference between these two properties in the Masai Mara is that Mara Explorer is adult only and Mara Intrapids is a family friendly property. This property is 30 tents. The rooms are also liver facing. We have two family tents. So in case you have adults traveling with your kids, you can request to book the family tent. We also offer all the activities in Explorer, but besides that, we also add on uh, the kids' activities. The kids club is free for all our resident clients. The two properties are 45 minutes out of Nairobi Wilson Airport and about 10 minutes uh, from the airstrip to the camp. 
So this is a sample of a big a double bed, the interior of the intra, intrafit tent in Masai Mara. This is a family tent. So you have one big bed, one, one double bed in the one of the rooms, a living room area, and you have another twin bed for the kids. And again, the, you will not be disappointed in the Masai Mara, especially if you stay in a property in a prime location like what we have the Intrafit and Explorer. This is a sample, uh, basically it's a, a restaurant. In our restaurant, in the evenings, we offer free cultural activities. We have the Maasai's coming in Masai Mara basically uh, to entertain. So they would have the cultural dance and the guests are free to join. And you could also visit the Maasai village if you so wish. We have a kids club and we also encourage the parents to join the kids if they so wish. So we want to ensure that the kids learn, they have fun, and the parents also get time away from um, the children at some point. Uh, besides everything else we offer, we also offer weddings. And so if you want to have that destination wedding or if your clients wish to, it's also another way of remembering uh, where you made your vows or even new vows within the property. Uh, similar to Mara Intrapids, we have some rural intrapids. Uh, this one is 28, 27 tents uh, with two family tents. Again, game viewing is good all year round. Uh, we offer, in this property you can also do astronomy, so that's something that we offer free of charge to our guests. There's walking safaris, the kids club is still active, and we also have uh, lots of family and fun for uh, luxury activities. It's 50 minutes out of Wilson Airport, and you can access this property by air and by road. Uh, that's a sample of the twin beds in some twin room uh, in Samburu in Trapids. And these are family tents. So basically the same concept. So have one big bed and twin beds on the other side and a shared living area. Um, like I said, on Mara Intrapids, we also allow our clients to interact with the local community. And it's also part of what we do when we're giving back to the community. So we also have lots of activities and we engage with the schools and the families in the neighborhoods because we want to also improve their livelihood. This is a restaurant in Samburu Intrapids. Uh, we have Great Shivani Lodge uh, in Naivasha. This property is uh, about two and a half hours out of uh, Nairobi by road. There's also a near street for those guests who'd like to go by air. We have 30 lodge rooms, some pillars, basically a Badea and Longo Uh These properties are ideal for honeymooners, weddings. We can also do stargazing because the skies are very clear. And we also, for those in the mice market, you also have some conference rooms. And the one thing I must say is that it's a golf resort. So we have an 18 hole golf resort. For those who wish to play golf in high altitude, this is where most of our people have been trained, uh, not necessarily in the property, but within this area. Training in high altitude is a lot more challenging than any other place. We also do wine tours. So for those who'd like to go for a wine tour or to organize that as part of the discussions, that's also included. There are horse rides, boat trips, and birding safaris. Um, so these are just a few photos of what we've done. That's a wedding, an outdoor wedding. And we also do, for the honeymooners, we do exclusive dinners and breakfasts away from everybody else, and that's a bush dinner. And again, all our properties are family friendly apart from the adults only properties. So again, Adventures Club is one of the aspects that we also like to bring out for all our clients. Uh, Voyager Beach Resort, uh, this property I would say has hit the storm. It's one of the most popular properties that we have. It's based on the Kenyan coast, uh, basically north coast. We have 232 cabins. Maybe just to mention, this property is themed as a cruise ship. So basically, in terms of the words I use, for example, I'll say cabins in, in place of rooms. We have uh, Broadway shows, which means every day when the ship, quote and quote, because it's not actual an actual ship, it's just uh, a, a theme. Every night it docks, and where the ship docks, uh, the cuisine, the food, um, the dress code for the staff changes. So it changes every day and it changes for 14 days before we can repeat any concept. What this means for our clients is that there's a lot of fun, there's a lot of uh, diversity in terms of experience, 
and there's lots, lots of stuff for people to remember. The kids club is extremely active in this property. Uh, obviously, we do get a lot more children here. And many families come back because that's where the memories are. It's 45 minutes out of Nairobi Airport um, and another 30 minutes out of Mombasa International Airport to the hotel. You can also access this property by rail out of Nairobi and uh, the transfer is about the same distance. I would quote it as one of Africa's best entertainment resorts. And so you never miss a moment in this property. Um, we have lots of clients visiting this property. Uh, and as you can see, the view uh, in terms of access to the uh, sea is very close. And we also have a variety of uh, pools for the guests to access, including a quiet area for those who would rather have a quiet time. Um, our room types, I decided to just highlight them. We have a total of five room types. We have the garden view, which is the first room type that we have. Uh, this room has, it can have different uh, breakdowns. So basically you can have one, two to three people in the room. You can also have a room for three. Uh, I know we've had those queries in terms of the capacity of each room. Um, the superior garden view room is one of our biggest rooms. This basically is usually the family room. And this is the only room type where you can get interconnecting rooms. So uh, out of this room type, you can, if you have families and kids, this is a room that I would recommend because you, one, you can get two rooms interconnecting and you can also comfortably have up to three people, sometimes even four in one room. We have the superior sea view room. Uh, usually the superior sea view rooms have direct view of the ocean. And they're also located uh, further away from the main, the public area. Uh, we have the executive rooms and the, they're in two views. We have the garden view and the sea view. The difference is basically just the view and the deco. Otherwise, uh, everything else is the same. So that's a sea view one. Like I said, our kids club is actually quite active. So anytime you send kids over to us, you will not be disappointed. And of course, water sports is something that you can do from this property. And then of course, there's a, a relaxation area where guests can get to relax. We also have mini boardrooms. We offer weddings. And uh, for those looking to have romantic dinners, you also can get that. You could also do excursions out of uh, the hotel to either for Jesus, you can go on a sunset down, you can go for bike rides, so there's a lot more even outside the hotel. Finally, we have a property in uh, Savo West National Park, this Voyager Ziwanikam. It's about four hours drive from Nairobi and from Mombasa. So you can access it from the city and uh, both cities, either the Mombasa and uh, Nairobi. Uh, we also have our own airstrip. So for those guests who are either using a charter or would like for whatever reason to have their private means to the camp, that's also allowed. It's probably one of the most unique properties that we have. You can uh, go uh, on a tour to the farm. We have Isheha Farm. There is a World War I battlefield that is right next to the uh, camp. You can go to Msima Springs, which is basically, I would say, a natural uh, aquarium. We have Lake Chala, and then there's a castle. So basically, that's what the tent looks like. There are two different decors, but uh, basically the same in terms of capacity. You have a perfect view of Mount Kilimanjaro. This is the only place apart from Amboseli that you can access, you can see Mount Kilimanjaro. Besides that, we have a dam right outside and fishing is allowed. So that's another activity that you could do at the camp. We do romantic dinners and breakfasts. Uh, we have some jetties right inside the dam. So you could also indulge your clients with that. We do nature walks. We have one of the biggest bird species in Savo National Park. So that's something else that your guests will and can experience because we also offer it uh, free of charge. Besides that, we offer bush breakfast and bush dinners in this property. And every morning is different. The view changes. Uh, this, uh, you know, it's just being exposed to nature in itself gives you a different feel. And for those who doubt if Savo has a wildlife, it's just as good. And this is also the only property where we are in a position to do a night game drive. So there's a lot of exciting uh, stuff to do as far as wildlife and birding is concerned. We 
allow and encourage our guests to also uh, experience tree planting. So you could also do plant a tree to help you remember, or even for us to remember you, your visit. And most guests, it's something they indulge. You could also go to Lake Chala. That's a beautiful lake you see on your extreme uh, right uh, left. And of course, it's an discussion that takes uh, slightly more than two hours, but actually worth it. In the farm, we also have uh, pivot irrigation, that is large scale uh, based farming. Uh, and we take our clients through an discussion where they're taught from the planting area. You can see a tractor there. We have people uh, on an discussion of the in the flower, sorry, in the fruit farm. And you could also go through the entire discussion in the entire farm, which takes about three hours. Uh, finally, we also have the kids club that I mentioned this earlier. This is basically our biggest uh, uh, net, uh, network in terms of uh, repeat customers, especially for our kids even when they grow up. So for Intrapids and the Voyager brand, we have the kids club. So between the age of three and 11, and 12 to 17, uh, respectively, we have uh, Young Rangers and Adventures Club. Uh, and of course, the training is basically to expose them to one culture, give them a chance to experience uh, what it is that you know, the different communities are engaged in, and to give them a memory of what their holiday was beyond just accompanying mom and dad. So they're just different activities depending on the property. Uh, they range from uh, going on a, on a horse or even camel ride to playing together with other kids uh, to actual learning. So that's it. Um, so just to sum it up, we have the three brands and the additional two brands are basically our kids club. So over to you, Sarah. Sorry, I was um, doing social media as well while you was talking. Fantastic, thank you. That is really, really amazing um, to see all the different things that we can do. Um, we have got a couple of questions that have come in, um, but if you have any other questions now, you've literally, you've got Tabitha direct from Kenya. There's nothing about Kenya she doesn't know, so please um, let us know. Um, I know that somebody's just asked a question on, Paula has asked, what star rating is the Voyager? Oh, hang on, you're muted. Let me unmute you. I did, I did. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Voyager Beach Resort is Foster. Is that Foster. Foster? Yes. Perfect. And I know the rooms were renovated, uh, was it a couple of years ago? We had done some reno renovations in um, about three years ago. And the latest thing we did was change the decor. So anybody who has sold Voyager before would notice that the, the photos I'm sharing right now have a different decor. So we did change our the interiors, the linen, uh, the bath, but we do have, we still have some work to do, to be honest. But yes, some work was done, mainly in the superior garden view rooms. Yeah, perfect. So I know with um, the Voyager, that's always been a really big firm favorite on the UK market. Um, and also, um, We've, we've, in terms of sort of your trips, where, where would be best to do a beach and, and a safari? Have you got like a certain example of a tour that you would, you would say to do? So you do sort of three nights um, at the Voyager, then you would go on to, where, where would be the best places to go and, and do your safari? Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, usually I would recommend if you're flying right into the coast, so basically the people flying into more international airports, you can do, you can go to the to, to Voyager Beach, stay a few days. You can go to Sabo West. You could even combine that with Amboseli. So you can do Amboseli, even though we don't have a property out of the need for us to do that, we've partnered with Osukai. So you can do Sabo East West, or you can do Amboseli Sabo. You could also fly out of Mombasa to the Masai Mara, something that most people don't realize. So you, could, you can decide, depending on what you'd like to do, you can do a few nights uh, in Mombasa, fly out, go to the Mara, come back to the coast. You could also alternatively just, depending on the budget, because the, 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 the safaris into Amboseli Savo usually would be cheaper and can be done by road. You could also just drive out of Mombasa, go to Savo Amboseli, or go to Savo for a couple of nights and come back to the coast. 
Brilliant. That, that's if you're flying out of the out of Mombasa. If you come directly from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, uh, we do have some flying safari. So guests could arrive, spend a night in Nairobi depending on the arrival time. And depending on the flight you're on, you could actually just proceed on safari the same day, depending on how, how you feel. And you could actually start with Samburu, go to Naivasha, and then proceed to Masai Mara. We always want Masai Mara to be the last because it's, it's, it's basically your best experience in terms of, especially wildlife. So we always want in how the itinerary is done, that to be your last experience where possible. But also it, it, can, it can be done in whatever order. Perfect. Um, and would you say that, like, in terms of the, would, is, is majority of your bookings for adults or do you get a big, massive share of family market as well? Sorry, say that again. Is it adults only or? No, is a majority of your bookings, do, do, they, yes. do you normally find it's more couples or is it, do you do a lot for families as well? Actually, a lot of our business is family, family business. And uh, maybe it's because uh, from the onset, uh, it was structured to be targeting the families. So we've had a lot more in terms of uh, what we offer for families and especially for kids. So we do have, especially the intra kids and the Voyager brands. The Explorer brand was meant for the clients who primarily will not go to intra kids because either they're honeymooners or they somehow may, may be slightly more elderly and they would like to have some quiet time or even depending on uh, temperament and all that. But to be honest, it's ended up being some sort of fair mix so we do have honeymooners coming because especially with smaller properties, they, they, you don't have so much interference. And for Voyager, the ones who go to Voyager generally are looking for fun. So it somehow works itself out. Perfect. Um, Paul has just asked as well, um, with regards to the Voyager, thank you um, from the question previous. Is it, is it located in Diani Beach? Uh, no, Voyager is located, uh, Diani Beach is south coast. We are located in the north coast. Uh, but yes, there is Diani Beach. That is uh, uh, south, south, south Coast. Perfect. Um, Tia has asked, um, were the Samburu bathrooms outside also? Uh, no, unfortunately, Samburu intrapids, uh, the bathtubs are not outside. Uh, the, 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 the only property we have with the exterior bathtubs is Mara Explorer. And that was primarily because we were targeting honeymooners. So we we're trying to give them a little more uh, and even in terms of the spacing, even though Samburu and uh, Mara Intrapids have a lot of spacing between one tent and the next, for Explorer it was necessary that we give them a lot more privacy than uh, would give to any other property. Okay, perfect. Um, Natalie has asked the Voyager Ziwani camp, is it adult only? No, Ziwani camp is uh, open to everyone. Uh, the interesting thing is that we seem to have a lot more adults in Ziwani than uh, the children, but it's still open and available for children. At, at least the current branding kids allowed. Yeah. Uh, Trish has asked as well, um, lovely looking hotels. Can I ask you when you would say is the best time to visit? The interesting thing about Kenya generally, uh, it's always a perfect time to visit. We are fortunate to be enjoying an amazing uh, climatical condition. Even the times when we complain about the rain, when you come, you'll be disappointed because it's not those extremes. We've had a few cases of flooding, but it's insignificant. Uh, the only time that I think can get very, very wet is uh, in the month of May. Um, but any time, in fact, the problem we've had is that we have talked too much about migration that we have somehow misled our clients. A place like Masai Mara, and right now even Samburu, the game is extremely good. You will see wildlife any time of the year. And so sometimes to your customers, to your clients, it might actually be helpful to encourage them to travel, even peak off peak, because getting rooms is a lot easier. They pay probably even half the amount they would have paid in peak season. And so it's, the experience is actually amazing. I, I, I'm not saying this because I said it, but because I've also experienced it. But all said and done, May is normally one of the, because for most people, they, they are uncomfortable with the rain, especially if they're coming and hoping to be outdoor. So the month of May is one to avoid. Besides that, months like March, April, May have ended up becoming almost low season because it's a lot less busy. So you, your clients may actually enjoy the benefits of paying less and getting the exact same. Yeah, perfect. 
Thank you for that. That's answered all of the questions. Um, Carol has asked, um, the weddings, are they, rec are they recognised in UK law? Um, we have had a few challenges with the, we haven't, actually our biggest market was the UK and we had a few challenges in terms of uh, them being recognised and so it's, it's kind of become a place that we are now reviewing that afresh. Uh, because I think there are changes in the laws, because initially we were doing lots of weddings out of the UK, and especially for Voyager Beach and for Marine Tropics. And so please allow me, I will be able to respond to you on that, maybe in a, in a few days' time, in regard yeah. to the law. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, Trish has also asked, um, which beach would be the best to twin centre with the camps? Voyager. Yeah. <laughs> which beach would be the best to twin centre with the camps? Of course, Voyager Beach. Yes. Yeah, no, so, like I said, uh, Voyager, Voyager as a brand uh, twins pretty well in terms of experience. So you get one, um, because even in terms of concept, we try to maintain the same concept. However, depending on what you wish to experience within the period that you are in Kenya, you could still uh, do uh, a Voyager and an Intrapid and, and still do get a good experience. In terms of accessibility, the easier ones would be the Mara and Savo. That is out of the coast. Otherwise, unless you have a lot more time. And how long would, it, would that take to sort of reach there? Would it be a couple of hours on bus or? Yes. Uh, by bus from Savo, I mean, from Voyager Beach to Savo would be about four hours. It's actually the distance from Nairobi and uh, from Mombasa is about the same depending on the speed but obviously about four hours about four hours okay that's yes. fine um julie's asked as well um if you go to the coast and then you intend on going back so you, you so say for example you do a three night at voyager then you do the safari and then you come back and um, she's saying are you able to leave your excess baggage at the hotel while you're on the safari rather than having to take it with you and then come back to the hotel Yes, yes, normally we would uh, keep for you your luggage, so you don't have to worry about your luggage. You just need to record it and it's stored for you. And um, from my past experience when I'm traveling, because I do a lot of travel, I'm charged for that, but we don't charge for anything. So as long as you've recorded and you, you've stored your bags uh, safely with our concierge, they are safe. And uh, that's the same reason why we recommend you at least give yourself one last day at the coast, so at least you get to park, you know, unwind, because again, uh, the safari experience can be exhausting. So as opposed to taking all your days on safari and then you come back in a rush to go to the airport, probably go in between your beach stay and then come back to the coast and proceed uh, maybe a day later or so. But yes, in terms of storage, that will be happy to store your, uh, your things for you at, at no cost. Brilliant. Um, is the Voyager Beach, is it bed and breakfast all inclusive or half board? Voyager Beach Resort is on all inclusive basis. Uh, for our guests uh, who are busy having fun, dancing, and uh, experiencing everything we have to offer, all inclusive makes uh, uh, makes makes uh, sense. However, in the event that you have a guest who'd like to book on half boat, uh, we could give a, a reduction on that. Okay, perfect. Um, and when when you've been on safari, what's been your favourite animal? Myself. Yeah. Oh no, uh, it's, um, I think for me, because when I started working, my first experience was Masai Mara. I sort of, I think I have been on this journey where I keep uh, changing, but I think the biggest thing that I can say for me was extremely exciting and that I think every guest who gets to experience is, is more than lucky is when you find any of the animals killing, you know, when, you, when you're able to experience a kill, I don't know, for me, it gives me more excitement than the migration because it's, you, you're actually experiencing survival. You, you're seeing how the animals uh, have to, like you go to your house and make your dinner. You yeah. actually experience a situation whereby somebody else is trying to make together their next meal. It's, it's amazing. But I think all said and done, I would settle for the lion. The lion, wow. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I love the elephant. Whoa. 
and I went and seen the features the creatures and um, but no safari is such an exciting option and I think at the moment that this is what clients are looking for they're looking for something that little bit different they're wanting to do sort of you know in terms of sustainable tourism as well we was talking about the visiting the schools and the villages um, and this is what you've got with Kenya you've got literally everything and big happy smiling faces um, you know you, you you walk around a corner and the teams are Jumbo, hello, you know, it's, it's, you know, this is what you get in Kenya. So it is exciting. Um, just one last question for you um, with regards to um, COVID. Is Kenya open um, to tourists now or is, is the destination closed still? Um, I know some places have started to reopen. So I'm just, we're just kind of wondering just so that we're, we're aware. No, Kenya is not. Currently, um, we are not open to international travel. We were hoping, we were actually waiting for a statement from our president uh, the past uh, Saturday. Uh, but uh, because we also, our, our COVID cases also developed very late. So it's also a concern. We may not necessarily be ready. So, you know, like, you know what, all we are doing is we are trying to defer the infection so that we can handle it. So, I think as of now, um, I mean, and, and I thank God this is the case, we still know we need to somehow get sick and get better. So yeah. at this point in time, no. So the current, we, are, we currently have a curfew, which is what makes it hard even extreme for the hotels to open right now because we have inter-county uh, lockdown. So basically, for example, I cannot go to the coast. So even if I was looking for a holiday, I cannot go to the coast, which means even the coast cannot get business because the most people who go to the coast, uh, the local clients come from the city of Nairobi mainly and, and the other cities away from the coast. The other thing is uh, because we have a curfew in the evening, we would have a challenge with serving dinner because you know we would, we would need to have our waiters home in good time. Otherwise, yeah. the alternative would be to house them. And because most of them have families, they probably would be okay with that. So we are, we are, we, you know, we are humbly you know, just praying and hoping that everything goes on well. But uh, studying from what other countries have experienced, we will be okay. It's just a matter of time. And so the current uh, review would be done at the end of this month, which is not too far away. But as, as I speak to um, partners in the industry, most of them are looking at uh, opening in July. But since it's not something that you can be sure that uh, it will happen, what you're doing is just reviewing uh, what's going on in the market, if you, you know, like for example, had the state, the president's uh, statement been that we are ready to go into business, then we are ready, we are available and we are ready to open the hotel. So we would open as soon as, you know, it's, it's good enough. But of course, in the meantime, all we are doing is changing. You know, our lives have now changed. So in terms of the office, we are looking at social distancing. So making sure that even when we come back to the office, we have enough space between one person and the next. And we're looking at the hotel, the same thing. Some of our hotels are operating on a buffet. We cannot do buffets anymore. So now we're looking at going a la carte. So yeah, it's, a lot is changing. So even though the hotels are closed, we are still cracking our brains and you know, changing to comply with the new regulations and requirements. And also to make sure that when we do open, our clients are safe. Yeah, perfect. And uh, will you let us know when you, when you sort of have confirmation about the, the openings and things, will you send a message out via message board to everybody in the reward yes. program so that we're all brilliant? That'd be... That would be yes. good, yeah. Yeah, sure, I, I will definitely do that. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and Trisha's just asked as well, what is the best currency? What's the best currency? Yeah. I would recommend, uh, recommend the US dollar. Uh, although, to be very honest, when you're in Kenya, we have lots of forex bureaus. Uh, as long as you avoid changing your money in the hotels, because they're a lot more expensive, if you go to the regular forex bureaus, don't do it at the airport, don't do it in the hotel, just, the regular forex bureaus in the you could get them in the shopping malls they are a lot cheaper you can change from most currencies but if you're coming into the country i would recommend either use a us dollar or euros uh, avoid the other currencies because you're likely to lose money when you change your money into into kenya shillings yeah yeah no i think it was dollars that i took when i went um paul has asked a question but i don't think that you'll know the answer to this um She's asked what inoculations are compulsory for Kenya, but I think that that's something that should maybe need to speak to um, the doctor or the pharmacy for because every country has different needs and there's, there's nothing compulsory for you guys, is there? It's just more so what, what each country would, would recommend to people yes. to, to take. 
no that, that i could only check for her but i i, I do not want to comment I, I need to check my my you know with our health uh, experts yeah okay no that that's absolutely fine um i don't have any more questions so sorry we've grilled you a little bit at the at the very very end um but no thank you thank you so much for coming for coming on and um i hope you were able to get back in time for the curfew because i know it must be quite late now for you um no 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 I'm okay. I, I live five minutes away from the office, so okay. I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate. I, it's not too late, and uh, it was a pleasure actually being here. I forgot to mention you, our amazing partner. You know, we are happy to work with my booking rewards, and we will continue to do that to support our partners, and we'll make sure that we keep everybody engaged, we share as much information as we can, so that at the end of the day, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. So yeah. thank you, thank you for the support. And uh, yeah, I, I wish everybody uh, a really, really good uh, season ahead and uh, let everybody stay safe. Perfect, and um, yeah, we're certainly, um, I'm sure that everybody will be sending the bookings across to you and everybody will be now on social media sharing everything, which is normally what happens after after um, we've done a webinar. Um, yes. contact, contact details, um, if you need any contact details, if you log onto the, onto the reward program, um, through the message board, you can get hold of Tabitha, through there straight away um, but also um, if if I if, if we everybody that's on the webinar will we'll send you the details and um, so you've got Tabitha's contact details as well so I'll drop you an email and um, it'll be probably tomorrow um, just so that you can get hold of it if you've got any other questions um, so for me that is it um, thank you so much for your continued support um, Tabitha thank you for for the time to come on and tell us about your fantastic product and um, we will see you all next time. Um, we're going to be doing more webinars um, with, with Heritage Hotels uh, moving forward. So get thinking if you've got anything that you want covering or any questions that you've got. And um, yeah, we'll speak to you again. So thank you very much and goodbye. Bye. Bye.